Welcome to another episode of the Bank Free Blueprint. And today I have with me Gary Boomershine. Welcome, Gary. It is uh, super exciting to be on here with you, Tom. We we go back many, many years, my friend. So yes, we awesome certainly do. Ab- absolutely, yeah. So um, Gary was you've been you were one of my first mentors and coaches when I started in the real estate lending side of the business. This would have been seven, eight, close to eight years ago now. And uh, I remember the first time we met. I, I, what I really, the first thing I remember about you is the energy and the, um, the drive and the passion that you had for the business. And um, to this day, I still see that in, in everything that you do. It's never, it's never halfway. It's always there with a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of um, passion. So um, I, I think, and I want to thank you for everything that you taught me and coached me through. I know that when we met at first, I was not in that, I was in a pretty tough position because I had been pretty well beat up from the uh, economic downturn. And uh, it was it was a bit of a, a challenge, but with your help and your support and a couple others, it was, uh, it's it's been an amazing journey. So I'm really honored to have you on the show. I feel uh, blessed that you're, you're willing to share your knowledge and expertise with me. So welcome. Yeah, that's, that's a super nice introduction. And I'll tell you, Tom, if, if we are in the real estate business and we haven't had a few knocks, uh, we haven't been around a long enough time, right? Right, right. Isn't that so, true? Isn't yeah, that it's true? awesome. My, it's funny. My wife and I were chatting yesterday. Uh, our daughter, I've got two daughters, one that just went off to college and uh, one that's in eighth grade. And my youngest is like crazy full of energy. And uh-huh. hyper. my wife's like, she's got your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, good. No, but, it's, it's good. It's contagious. That's really, that, that's great. I mean, it's a great attribute. I, I think of something, uh, remember when we were, we had gone through a couple of the uh, sessions, a couple of the weekend workshops and whatnot. And I remember this as plain as day. You asked me if I was willing to do a video testimonial for you you had a couple people there with with the with the big cameras and ready to go and you asked me if i would and i said i'd love to i'm i don't know that i can do it but i'd love to and i and the camera came on me and i locked up i couldn't say a word i i i mean and we tried several times different ways and it just it didn't work it just didn't i wasn't able to share or talk. And so the part of what makes me think of that right now is just yesterday I did last night, I did a two and a half hour workshop uh, workshop on, on, it was on um, um, eliminating self doubt. And part of the reason for that is I'm in a program where uh, that was one of the projects that we work on. And with that, I realized that this was an issue because not only did it happen there, but it happened another time when I was, uh, I flew up to Seattle to do a, uh, to help uh, somebody with some testimonials and with uh, some marketing. And I couldn't, I just couldn't stand in front of the camera and say anything. And so I've been working my way through that and pushing through and, and I feel like I've made some good progress, although there's still plenty more to go. But do you have any, uh, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but do you have any advice for somebody in that situation where they are so, I mean, just almost locked up when is, I, I think it's the fear of failure. It's a, it's a self-doubt and that type of thing. Just, just yeah. You know, it's funny. I know that this is a real estate uh, uh, discussion and I've mm-hmm. got lots to share, especially for your audience. I'm really excited about that. But since you are going down that tangent, you and I have something very much in common. Um, you and I both have, I, I, years and years ago, I was diagnosed um, with chronic severe stage fright and if you remember i shared yeah, that with you in I fact you could that, type yeah. my name in the internet there was an article written in like early 2000s on how i overcame the the stage fright and uh, you know if you just think of human nature mm-hmm. um there's there's fight or flight right mm-hmm. some people fight and that's just they're that's what they were created with right and some people are more in the flight. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that I, I had I had a lot of self-doubt. I think it came from, I grew up in a family that was, my, my dad was pretty hardcore. Mm-hmm. And what I realized is that I, I had the self-doubt, like when, you know, same type of thing. I was amazing one-on-one, but then I would have to stand up in a group. I, I was in college, Tom. I, I took, 
I took public speaking like four times and I quit every single time. I never did it. And it wasn't until my thirties that I said, I've got to overcome this. And I actually got into sales. I went from yes. consulting into technology sales. And I'm like, I got to get over this thing. So you know what, it, you know what it is? It's for me is focus on giving. Mm -hmm. And if you, and, and <clears throat> there's a book called three feet from gold, one of the Napoleon Hill books mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it went out and interviewed a number of people that are successful today you know billionaires and looked for things that were in common of, on on you know how did they do it was it based on their education did they were they born into wealth and the one thing they all had in common was that they actually focused on giving to others mm -hmm. and i think that was the key which is instead of focusing on yourself you focus on what can i do for somebody else and it's amazing what that does. It's like, how can I give to somebody else? You focus on them and not on you. And that, yes. was, the, that was the huge thing for me. The other thing, there was a book called, um, it was by, gosh, what was his name? We can pop it up. It's uh, Speaking Circles. In fact, I have it on my, on my uh, desk right over here. Be, Be Heard Now by Lee Glickstein. Oh, I remember that. You, uh, you, get, you shared me uh, his name, and I actually did some uh, – uh, he had him for a coach for a bit. Yeah. So, you know, one other thing before we jump into the, the real estate topic is, um, you know, people, people really like the whole key to success in sales. And, and most of us are in sales. If we, especially if you're in the real estate business, whether you're borrowing money and you got to go, you know, sell yourself to the lender or you're a real estate investor and you got to go sell yourself to the seller, we're in sales. And if you don't think you are, then, you know, there's always a sale that happens, right? If you're married, right. there was a sale that happened. Either you right. sold her or she sold you, right? Right, right. So, well, so. and just on that point, sales is not a f dirty four-letter word. And it took me a long, long time to realize that. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. People, people buy or people sell to people that they like, trust, and respect. Mm -hmm. A little bit of humility, especially like one of the most am amazing things, I had my first big deal. This is probably in... 2001 in sales. It was an $800,000 sale uh, down in Southern California to a company called Edwards Life Sciences. And the gal pulled me aside and uh, Jeanette was her name. And she said, you know what, Gary? She goes, I got to tell you, you, were, you guys were probably the last in line. She goes, you turned red. I, I, I turned bright red in front of a huge <laughs> group of executives. Yes. And she said, I have never seen a presentation like that. And she goes, I trust you. And uh, she goes, I turn red. So never lose that. And, and yeah. so, you know what? It's little nuggets in mm -hmm. our life. I think humility. Mm -hmm. If you look at Robert De Niro, massive stage fright, Robert De Niro, right? Yeah. And um, uh, what was his name that did Indiana Jones? Uh, go, <laughs> uh, uh, Harrison Ford, yeah, right. massive stage fright. So some of the best actors yes. and Hollywood dudes are... I, they've got the same problem. So, you know, it's, it's focus on other people and not on ourselves, but yeah. And, and being willing to be vulnerable. Um, and, and this is something that Brandon, I was, I was kind of wigging out a little bit last night before my presentation, because it was a two and a half hour presentation on eliminating self doubt. And, and who am I to say that I have the answers for that? But he said, just think of it from the perspective of you're sharing what you know, but you're also there learning along with them. It's a workshop where we're being vulnerable and sharing where you're at in this stage. And that was the most valuable piece of advice that I could have gotten for yesterday because once I dropped into that space of realizing it's not about me, it's not, I mean, it's ego that tells me it's about me if I'm up there presenting. It's about, it's about the people in the audience. And so yeah. Uh, that combination of vulnerability and just being, being willing to put yourself out there. Yeah. I reckon it works. It, it's absolutely. Not absolutely. You know, the key to sales. And um, I think it, for me, the whole like fear, and I still have it, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've seen, I've been in front of a thousand people. I've mm -hmm. done in front of 50 people and yeah. uh, I still get the stomach, you know, funkiness always yeah. the same. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's one of the greatest gifts because um, I've been told over and over again, it's like, we just find that, you know, you're real and yeah, it keeps I, you real. It's the same thing with being in front of sellers. Yep. So I, I would say anybody that has that issue of like any fear of speaking, don't worry about it. Yeah. Focus on somebody else. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a true gift. And yeah. for all of you that are amazing at it and you don't have it, that's congratulations. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, I'd love to. No, just kidding. So <laughs> uh -huh. right. it's fun.
Yeah, great, great. So uh, maybe could you just share a little bit about, well, why don't we go down this path? We have, you have been doing a lot of direct marketing. Uh, you, uh, what, 14 million pieces have been sent out through your group in direct mail, um, driving sellers to people, real, people that are willing to, are ready to sell their property, dri driving them to potential uh, borrowers, uh, contractors, rehabbers. Um, can you just maybe share a little bit about what you do and and uh, then we can get into some of the details of how we might be able to give our listeners some valuable advice or yeah. ways to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Let me give you a little backstory. So I, um, I'm in California. I'm not that far from you. I'm in Northern California, mm -hmm. about an hour from San Francisco. I've been full-time uh, real estate investor, private lender. Uh, I, I do some wholesaling. Um, I don't do a lot of buy and hold right now in this current market, and I still do lending. Love mm -hmm. lending. Actually, lending is my more, more than my passion. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in four real estate markets, and I became a full-time real estate investor in 2004. That's a whole story. We could do a whole podcast on that. Um, I learned probably like the way most people learned. I got excited about real estate. I went to a lot of seminars, a lot of courses. I paid for a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even want to mention the well into the six figures of yeah. this coaching program, that coaching program. I found uh, some was good, some was not so good. And, but what I found is that, um, you know, if you're not on the phone talking to sellers and, and qualifying deals and making offers, there's no money. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you're a lender lender, you're, you need, you're talking to borrowers. If you're a real estate investor, you need to be in front of sellers constantly. And, um, you know, in different markets, right? It, the, 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 the real estate market is a bell curve, right? You, you start at the beginning of the cycle. It's usually a seven to eight year cycle. This cycle is going on a little longer. Um, at the beginning of the cycle, like 2009, 2010, if you had cash, right? You could go to the M you go to the MLS, you're buying bank REOs or you're buying foreclosure auctions or HUD properties in the later mm -hmm. cycle, like we are in now, all the deal flow is dried up. You've got to go direct to the seller. Mm -hmm. and, uh, th that's what's called off market deals. And so I, given my background, I was in technology. Um, I was a computer science and engineering major and worked for Anderson consulting, which is now Accenture. Mm -hmm. And I basically went and, found a few of my former colleagues overseas and I had them build me a little engine um, that would actually do a massive amount of d direct mail. And when I talk about direct mail, I'm, I'm talking about like really focused. It's more called direct response marketing of being able mm -hmm. to, you know, manipulate a marketing list to really focus in through an algorithm to find the types of sellers, right? Yeah. They're going to be more motivated to sell. We got a hundred and we have 120 million properties in the United States that we have access to as, you know, as real estate investors, public record data. And there's about 18 million that we figured out um, that are really the good targets. Mm -hmm. So I used a team to do that and then very focused, high response rate direct mail. And so I had that engine built and, uh, wow. and it's, now, it's now being utilized by about 250 uh, 275 experienced real estate investors all over the country. Um, they're using this. It's kind of a, what we're, we're really calling it as a shared service. Mm -hmm. You basically get rid of all the brain damage, right? As a real estate investor, we want to be on the phone with sellers. We want to be negotiating deals, probably doing rehabs and focus there. We don't want to be focused on all the mundane tasks of, you know, all the, you know, mailing lists, et cetera. I said, <clears throat> and I, uh, the epiphany was a few years ago when I was sitting in a mastermind group, right? A bunch of, a lot of us probably on this call do mastermind groups. If you're not doing a mastermind group, I strongly encourage you. Mm, I, that. Agree. I agree. Right? I was with about 25 guys. These are in gals, uh, super experienced real estate investors sharing great ideas. But at the end of the day, all of us had to go implement everything on our own. And, I, uh -huh. and so I had the epiphany. It's like, gosh, what if we just had one team Right. Instead of everybody having to do it themselves and manage people and hire and fire and right, have single points of contact, which, you know, lost opportunity because that takes months. Let's get one team and then just share that team and do it faster, cheaper, better, get massive amounts of leverage and then do it in a way where we're all non-competitive. Right. So yes. we can share what's working. 
So I built that. It's called REI Vault. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing about 500,000 pieces of direct mail. We're doing a bunch of pay-per-click, right, in Facebook marketing. We use a shared system called Podio, which mm -hmm. is where all the leads come in. And then I even have a phone team that actually will call and, you know, follow up and pre-screen and qualify these people. We call uh -huh. them sales ninjas. And yeah. so it's really cool. I've been having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like an amazing system. Uh, and it's, it's really right, right in line with everything that we talk about on the show, and that's collaboration and alignment of interest and, and everybody working for the same target and same outcome. It, 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 it's a super way to leverage. It's a super way to um, reduce risk and increase profits. So it's, right. um, it's, uh, you know, Tom, I, I, you, you know this because of all of our history together, but mm -hmm. We all got into this business for passive income. Most, almost all of us, right? We read yeah. Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'd say ninety percent of the people on this call probably li list, uh, purchased the book yeah. uh, from Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and it was all about passive income. Well, then all of a sudden you get into real estate investing, and you find that there's more to it than that, and it becomes not only active but a job, right? Yes. Yes. And a lot of brain damage of banging your head and it's where you are in the food chain. And so, you know, what I wanted to do was build something that was passively active, right? Mm -hmm. So we could actually, where I, I didn't have to do all the work. I could have a sales team. I could have a phone team, right? Small team where they could do all the work. And then I was coming in and doing what I'm really good at is, is closing the deal, right? And then strategizing on the deal and moving on and having more time. I just, you know, more time to go to, as I mentioned before our call, I just got back from Sayulita, Mexico, right before the earthquake and, um, yeah. and then fly fishing in Montana before that. So, you know, <clears throat> for the listeners, it's like, you know, make sure, make sure you are always going back to why you got in this business. Mm -hmm. And because it's really easy to get sucked into $3 an hour, $10 an hour work, right? As a real estate investor, we should be making $500 to $1,500 an hour and, uh, and having a really good team doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's the idea of leveraging what you're good at and leveraging what someone else is good at. So, so we know, you and I know the real estate end of it very well, but maybe not so much in the marketing or not so much in the direct mailing or those types of things. And so what would you say for someone who's just starting out and they're apprehensive about, let's just take, for instance, um, virtual assistants, what would you give a, a person starting out maybe has a little bit of experience, but really they're nervous about letting somebody else do what they want to do or what they need, feel like they need to do. Is there any advice on being able to make that next step to really let somebody else in and be part of the team? Yeah. So if you're new, right, if you're, if you're a new investor, gosh, don't reinvent the wheel. You want to go find somebody that, right, you want to find the group that's actually really doing this business, right? There are people out there that are not doing the business. They are selling stuff. Mm -hmm. You want to find somebody that, that's really making money in this business, and then you want to replicate what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't reinvent. This real estate business is, is not something to try to like create or innovate something. You want to find what works, and then you want to do it at least as well, and then even better. Um, that's number one. Number two is, is marketing, right? Marketing is a return on investment. So mm -hmm. it's all about really a lot of people are like, well, how much is this and how much is that? It's like, what is the cost per deal, right? How much do I have to spend, right? In order to get a deal. And then mm -hmm. what's, what's the profit on that deal and what's the ROI? So as an example, those numbers are already known, by the way, those numbers across the country so if you're a wholesaler, right, if you're a brand new investor, don't have a lot of money, great way to go is to wholesale. What it means is you're, you find the, find the deal and then you're assigning the deal over to a cash buyer. Mm -hmm. That's a super hot market. By the way, a lot of people are making seven figures, seven great figures, a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And Nasser El, Nasser El Arabi, he's in, he's in, a, uh, he's in North Carolina. Um, 
he'll, he's, he's doing a hundred, I think last month he did $120,000 in net profits mm, nice. and he'll do over seven figures this year. And, yeah. And uh, what's nice about the wholesaling is that it, it is something you can get into without a lot of money. Right. And then do a couple of those deals. In fact, mm -hmm. I think every, everybody should be doing some wholesaling, right? If you're really good mm -hmm. at finding the deals, mm -hmm. you can wholesale some deals and then you can cherry pick some deals that you're actually going to turn into rentals or, you know, fix and flip or totally rehab, like if you're in, in California. Mm -hmm. uh, and so really be focused on what, what is the cost per deal and what is the ROI in profit? So if you're a wholesaler, it's typically about 600%. It's a 6X. So you spend a dollar, you should be making $6 in return. It might be as much as about 10 mm -hmm. or more. Um, if you're like in California, if you're doing marketing, it might cost you $5,000 in marketing to get a deal. That's about, uh, about the right number. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're typically wholesaling. You're, you're making, you know, 25,000 to $35,000 in assignment fees. Yes. Six, right. If you're in South Florida, as an example, it's going to cost maybe about $2,000 per deal. And you're typically making $15,000 in profit. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just focus on that. Don't, don't, I call it be greedy before cheap, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You really, because if you have no deal flow, you have no money in this business. Yes. And, um, and you know, and, and <clears throat> so that would be my first thing. You just, you just gave two markets just for um, um, balance, maybe a, a Midwest market. Yeah. What, what would you say that range would be? Oh, if eight hundred dollars to twelve hundred dollars is a really good amount of marketing. You know, some people some people are, are buying their deals from wholesalers, which is also great. A lot of rehabbers go to wholesalers or they're buying stuff through realtors. They're yeah. still spending the money. Yeah. <laughs> a wholesaler yeah. is gonna you know, the, the wholesaler is doing the same thing. But if you are going direct for your deal flow, so you, you know, you look at marketing. Marketing is either, hey, I'm sending out postcards or I'm doing Facebook marketing or pay-per-click, um, or you're buying from a wholesaler or you're buying it on the MLS. Some mm -hmm. point you are paying a cost of marketing, right? Yes. Now we like going direct to the seller and bypassing the realtor and bypassing the wholesaler completely because we want that profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's part of the system that you're able to bring together to help, help people do that. One of the things that you brought to light for me early on when we started working together, when you started uh, coaching me was lost opportunity cost. Can you just talk, share a yeah. little bit about that? Yeah, lost opportunity cost is, uh, is pretty simple. This market is not gonna last forever. We're in, we're, we're in the hottest market I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I've, been, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and, but it's not gonna last forever. And so if it takes somebody six months, right, to ramp up their business, you've lost, I mean, let's say you could be doing two deals a month for 20,000 each, right? Mm -hmm. That's $40,000 $40, times six months. That's $240,000 of profit that you lost because you waited or you thought you needed to go out and do more training or more coaching. It's or like, or you, know, you felt like you needed to do what the virtual assistant could be doing or somebody else helping absolutely. with marketing or all of those things. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for new investors, it's like, you know, Every one of us, Tom, you, you started new, mm -hmm. you know, I started brand spanking new. We all started from somewhere. I think mm -hmm. you know, the difference between the people that have done really well and the people that haven't is, is, is that they they take action. Yep. They are coachable, coachable, which means that they will, they're coachable. They're not trying, they're not the saying that they're the sharpest tool in the shed. They're going to go out and they're going to find the right person. They're going to replicate that model and mm -hmm. then take it from there and refine yeah. it and get it better and then start getting a, a, a small staff. Mm -hmm. um, I would strongly encourage, you know, having people work below you. That's, that's part of the leverage. There's mm -hmm. others, you know, there's OPM, other people's money. Yeah. There's OPT, uh, using other people's time and OPT, OPR, which is other people's resources, like yeah. systems, share somebody else's systems, tap into somebody else's staff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, very true. So. How about on the 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 lead generation side of things? You may you mentioned just briefly mentioned Facebook. Um, there's different ways of of starting to get uh, leads in. Any any advice for newbies on that? Yeah, I have a and I didn't develop this. I 
have on Facebook. Um, you can actually, I'll, I'll, I'll get it posted. We'll give a, a site out for you, Tom. I've got a postcard that outperforms everything that's ever been invented. Um, it was actually developed by a, a partner of mine. His name's Chris Chico. He's a wholesaler in South Florida. But we have a, a yellow blind copy postcard. I probably even have one in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, here, let me... Sh <laughs> give me a second. I'll give you an example of one. Um, maybe I won't. This is a return one. If you can actually see it. Uh-huh. This is a, what's called a blind po uh, copy postcard. It averages about a 7% uh, response rate. It is wow. known across the country. I, we've never seen, uh, Chris invented it. It outperforms everything. And, uh, and I'll make but, sure your listeners can get access to that. Yeah, for the, for the people who are listening, could you maybe just describe two or three things on, like maybe a brief description of what the postcard is? Yeah, it is blind postcard. Typically, most people out there are sending, hey, we want to buy your house. Mm -hmm. Or they're putting little pretty pictures or, you know, making it all in color. You do not want to do that. So number one, time tested, by the way, we sent out over 14 million pieces of mail. Um, and we're split testing constantly. And uh, so number one, yellow, canary yellow works the best. Mm -hmm. Number two, 110 pound paper. I know that sounds super in the, in the nitty gritty, but most of the companies, they will send out 40 pound, they get all smeared up and sellers don't call. And, um, and then the blind copy concept is that we're not saying that we want to buy the house. We're getting them to call. So we put, we put a message in front of somebody that piques their attention. It's what's called AIDA, AIDA, yeah. AIDI, no, AIDA, which is action. Do like, right? Did I get your attention? Did I pique your interest? Are you going to make a decision? Or are you going to take action? Right? If okay. you watch Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, it's totally classic. So this, this particular postcard says third notice on it. Um, and it doesn't say anything about, I want to buy the house. It's mm -hmm. really focused on getting them to call. So then what we do is if we've got the right targeted list of names and addresses that we know that these are going to be the top, you know, types of properties that we want to buy, yeah. We're sending this out and getting, you know, three to four to five times the number of calls. And then we use a, a phone team to actually, you know, follow up and pre-screen and we're crushing it off of that. Mm. Um, and then the second, you know, so we call, and I don't want to go into crazy details. It's the, the whole marketing component for getting sellers. I didn't invent this. This actually came from Dan Kennedy. It's called the five M's mm -hmm. of marketing. So there's the market, the message, the media, the multiple, and then the money. Like how much money do you have to spend, right, in order to get a deal? Mm. And that, that formula you got to get right. So the market is the list. It's the mailing list. It's the right mailing list. And, and uh, most people, this is one of the things I love, they're chasing not only the wrong list, but it's the same list that everybody else is using. They're going right. after absentee owners, yes. right? They're going to go out to list source. They're pulling a list because that's what all the seminar guys, by the way, they got that from me. They got mm -hmm. that from Chris Chico and myself because that's what we were doing like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And so they're going out and they're pulling a list, but they're missing all the nuggets. So we figured out a formula. It's called, we call it the invisible list. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and Chris Chico actually was the originator of this as well. But we're finding mostly inherited properties that's, that are mostly free and clear that are mostly not lived in. Mm -hmm. And our competition is missing that list. And wow. uh, I, there's a whole reason why. So we actually have to go and uh, we're able to buy. I have a team over in India. These guys used to be uh, the team that worked with Waypoint, which bought over 28,000 houses in the United States. And then they sold the Embassy Suite Starwood. Okay. I have that team and they're pulling a massive amount of data and going through all the, you know, propeller head stuff that they do. <laughs> uh -huh. And we score the data and we build a custom list for each of our members. And then we're doing all the marketing, uh, you know, different postcards, handwritten letters, offer packages. We've got to, we got to, we literally push a button mm -hmm. and we send out a FedEx offer to the seller. Uh -huh. um, that ha it's, it's seven pages with two signed contracts. Mm -hmm. and we don't have to do anything. We use a system that we just click a button. We're on the phone with the seller, click a button, put the price. 
what the offer price is and the next day you know fedex packages get automated uh wow. without any work talk so about efficiency and leverage i mean what what a way to do that first of all it's 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 tested it's it's gone through what did you say 14 million <laughs> uh please yeah, that's a little bit of mail, huh? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And 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 to know that it's been tested and that it's been refined right down to that to that finest point, and then to be able to turn it into a process or a system that doesn't take away all the valuable time that one has that that it, to do all the other things that are that are important in the business. Yeah. So that's that's pretty amazing. Do you? I, I, one little thing, Tom, I would have never been able to, and it's one of the reasons why I decided to start REI Vault. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the reason is that, you know, you go back to lost opportunity cost. It would have taken, if I couldn't have done it, it would have cost me, I mean, I, we've spent millions of dollars in investment. I've got a team of over 40 people that mm -hmm. are servicing and that are working as an expert team for all of us right now in the art that, that are members of REI Vault. I couldn't have done it if I was just doing it for my own business, right? Yeah. I couldn't have done it. And, and I, I couldn't go negotiate with the vendors. Like we've mm -hmm. been able to go and negotiate pricing for all of us. So we guarantee the lowest cost mail. Uh, if we can't do it for less, we'll use their mail house. So we, as a group, you couldn't possibly be able to get postcards and letters and offer packages out for less money. Why? Because with doing 500,000 pieces of mail, it gives us a massive amount of leverage with the print companies and mm -hmm. the data providers. Mm -hmm. um, systems, we're using Podio. Podio is like Salesforce um, and some of, it's a CRM. It's basically a system so that we don't have leads coming through email, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we're able to follow up with them and take notes and ask questions. So we've set up Podio and we, 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 we do that for everybody. It's all managed. So people, it would, take, it, would, it would take somebody, you know, six months to learn how to get that set up correctly and then use it. So once you, one, let's say it's gone through that process, you've sent out the, the FedEx type package, um, the contract. What, what are, how does that work from that point? Like as a wholesaler, what am I, at what point am I really stepping in and getting involved? Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's pretty simple. It's like you're, uh, you're working, let's say, like I'm in Oklahoma City. So mm -hmm. I, I'm in, that's one of the markets, one of the four markets that I'm working. So we pick a budget, right? How much, how much do we want to spend per month? And that can go up or down. Mm -hmm. And then what zip codes do I want to work in that market? All right. And a couple of days later, our team puts together a sales and marketing plan, a button mm -hmm. down that says, here's exactly what we we recommend what we want to do and how we're going to utilize that budget and what we would expect in terms of results. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of days later, boom, the marketing starts going out. And by the way, it goes out consistently every, every week mm -hmm. we're dropping marketing mm -hmm. consistently. Right. So then all of a sudden we set up the phone systems. So there's no work except a, about two and a half hours of training. We have two and a half hours of video saying, Hey, this is what's going to happen. And here's how to get the most out of, uh, of using this as a real estate investor. So then the sellers start calling, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to either send them to a live person to actually screen them, or we're going to put them through a pre-recorded voicemail. Okay. Uh, right. And then tr have those messages transcribed. Then I have a team of VAs that 24 hours a day with headsets. And as the leads are coming in, they are, you know, pulling pictures and pulling comparables. So they'll mm -hmm. log right into the MLS or the mm -hmm. RealQuest, pull pictures, and then basically notify, you know, us, hey, this is a good lead. This is yeah. one that's now qualified that's going to be a good one. And then we, we even have a phone team that can actually pick up the phone and do outbound calling and take it a second level and say, gosh, Mr. Seller, you called off of a property. Do you mind if I ask a few questions? Uh, we call those sales ninjas. Mm -hmm. in fact, I have something for your group. Um, oh, cool! In fact, uh, we we built we built a the perfect words, the script of what to say to sellers uh, exactly. And this is time tested mm -hmm. of exactly when you call a seller or or somebody on your team is going to call a seller, right? You hire somebody in the Philippines and you want them to you know, instead of you spending weeks or months trying to figure out the words, we've yeah. already built a form that says this is exactly what to say. They can plug in the information and out pops a lead sheet. 
And wow. um, why don't I give it to everybody? I know that, um, yeah. by the time that you publish this, we'll have it available, but it'll be Tom Bragelman, www.tombragelman.com forward slash sales ninja. Tom Bragelman.com forward slash sales ninja. That's a, uh, that's a free tool. Um, that will, it's a script of mm -hmm. exactly what to say, whether you're calling and doing a follow up where you're calling somebody, you know, totally blind, what, what words to say, what to ask in what order to test motivation, to get them to speak and to turn it into an appointment. Wow. That's very cool. Yeah. Yep. That, I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be really valuable for, for people who, especially beginners. So absolutely. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. That's great. The, the, so the, the call come, the, let's say the call comes in, do you help the wholesaler uh, convert as kind of, I don't know if convert is the right word, but um, help them make the, uh, make the seller feel comfortable with the situation and then maybe get them to the point where there's actually a deal done. Is there something within your processes that help, help that? So let's say it's a new wholesaler and, and they just, they're not really comfortable knowing exactly what to say or how to, how to uh, work that piece of it is, do you go that to that point or is that not? Possible? You, know, you know, we've got, uh, we got, I mean, we have, I don't even share this on the front end, but we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of training of, of what to say to a seller, okay. objection handling, objection handling scripts um, that'll be available. And in fact, I think with the sales ninja, you're, the, the objection handling of like when a seller says, well, how do I know that, that, that you're the real deal? Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, I, I'm not going to take some low ball, you know, offer. What are the perfect words? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then why? Um, so we've got okay. a huge amount of training for newer real estate investors. This is fairly new. We launched this about six months ago. Mm -hmm. We have a, and we did this because of exactly what you're saying. There are some newer investors. Yeah. Uh, originally when I built REI Vault, it was for very experienced real estate investors, people that are doing anywhere from four to 20 deals a month. And that was the group that we wanted, but we were kind of alienating newer investors. So we built a, what we call REI Vault Apprentice program. Okay. It's really a three month program that can be renewed for another three months or they can become REI Vault. But it is, um, what we found is it's not only the marketing, mm -hmm. but it's really the support and the coaching and the mentors. And so yeah. uh, we've, got, we've got coaching that will help them on both sides. Technical mm -hmm. coaching, mm -hmm. right? Where they can really get help on, hey, what do I do? I got this issue. And then also a lot of problems around inner game. Uh, a lot of real estate investors have stucks at the beginning of, you know, is this real and how do I do this and how do I do this? And so, you know, you, you know, Coach Willie. Yeah, I, so, I was just going to say between Coach Willie and Coach Mary, you have uh, a real powerhouse between those two. No yeah. Doubt. yeah, and then for, and then, you know, we even have a, uh, for, and this is available for new investors. Typically twice a year, we have what we call our REI Vault Member Summit. Mm -hmm. It's a three-day, you know, super intensive unlike people have said it's unlike anything they've ever done um we basically anybody that's in rei vault they get to come for free they just cover the cost of some of the meals so i, th I think it's like 200 bucks or something like that okay but it's a one day practicing event so practicing we're running around the room practicing we also do a lot of creative deal structuring mm -hmm. and then two days of masterminding so we break people up into a couple of groups and they mastermind and then usually they're doing that a couple of times a year. So, yeah. Wow. That's really cool. You know what I, I think we'll do is uh, uh, any of these links that we have, we'll put them in the show notes. So if anybody's driving while they're listening to this, don't worry about uh, writing it down. But if, uh, if maybe in the show notes after the show here, Gary, maybe you can tell me which, uh, which link to put in if people want more information on that. that yeah, area. absolutely. I'll, I'll give everybody right now over the phone and I'll do it off of your site, Tom, mm -hmm. and we'll put them in the show notes, but Tom Bragelman.com forward slash REI vault. Um, that will be more about what we do and our services. And uh, there's an application. This is an invite only group. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no sales pitch. Uh, we're not, we're not a vendor. This is not a vendor model. It's people that become members and they're going to also contribute. 
uh, because, and we offer, there's semi-exclusivity. So we mm -hmm. don't put a lot of people, we don't want each other competing against one another. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the ori original, you know, concept that I had. And so that would be tombregelman.com forward slash REI vault. And if you do fill out an application, make sure that you let us know that you came from Tom Bregelman. Um, we're not, we, we're, we're, we're super selective. The process is you fill out an application. Usually we'll get on a call. Um, it'll be just a, you know, we'll give you a lot more information about, you know, who we are and what we do. And, and uh, the, the cost of the service that we charge is the cost of one VA. So if mm. you get an army of people for the cost of, you know, you hiring somebody overseas at less than nine bucks an hour. Mm. So, um, and then yeah. whatever your marketing budget is. Yeah. So, yep. So the, we'll the put, power of leverage. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and by the way, the, we, the, it was super cool. Everything that we do, Tom, and you know this because we've worked in the past, but, mm -hmm. and I found the formula is, you know, we just do what, what's natural based on what our members are telling us everything. Mm -hmm. um, so originally I didn't know I, I, we were taking a percentage of the profits. So originally I, I called about 20 of my friends and said, Hey, we're doing this. What do you think? And they said, well, gosh, how about we pay for, you know, the cost and, uh, and then we'll give you a piece of the profits. So we were oh. getting a pretty nice, but it was the, the, the bookkeeping on that was a nightmare. So oh, sure. we asked everybody and they said, gosh, if you could do all this, you know, set up our systems, do all the direct mail, pull the list, you know, do it, you know, guarantee the lowest cost. If we could do all that for the cost of one VA, mm -hmm. that would be a no brainer. And so we did that and we haven't changed it yet. Wow. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So, so those links will be available. And so let's go. Um, I want to ask you a question about if you were to go back in time and you were to give yourself one piece of advice, right now, what would that be? Don't reinvent the wheel. Okay. That would be Great. number one. Don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, okay. That would be number one, uh, specifically for me, because I came out of the technology world and don't reinvent the wheel. Go find what works, replicate it, and then make it better. Um, number two. So I know you said one piece of advice. Number yep. two is have a coach, yeah. have a mentor. Uh, I, I, I have two. I have two, I, I have two mentors. I, this is probably, it's been a game changer. I'm, a coach is somebody that gets to know you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. They're able to point out blind spots. And, um, and so, and, and, uh, I, another one, I, you were asking me about uh, favorite books. This goes right along with it. Mm -hmm. Um, traction. If you haven't read the book traction by Gina Wickman. I strongly yeah. encourage everybody. They, they, they That's have a model. Cool. Yeah, they have a model called EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's really about focus mm -hmm. and how to run a business. If you're, if you're, it doesn't matter whether you're new. All the, all the people. I'm in a number of masterminds. Every, everybody that I know that's really making and performing, they run it as a business. And, uh, and they have systems. And, and they have systems. Yeah, that's what traction is all about. Yeah. Yeah. So those and would be the two. You you also mentioned uh, three three feet from gold as uh, as a as a good one. I, I read that one uh, quite a long time ago, and I thought that was really good too. Yeah, three feet from gold. I actually think my name is in that book somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Gino, uh, uh, that was uh, Sharon, um, Sharon and and Greg Reed uh, mm -hmm. wrote that book. It's a Napoleon Hill Foundation book, and that's another really good one. Uh, I can't tell. I've I've given out probably four or five hundred copies of that book. Mm -hmm. It's 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 so meaningful. Yeah. Um. It's it's the success formula, and also you know most of us are literally three feet from gold, and a lot of people give up. Mm. And, uh, it's a very encouraging book. Yeah. Thank you for those for sharing those. How about any any advice on mindset on on really if if somebody's on that edge of almost ready to do something, but they're, they're finding it hard to, to take that next step to really get in there and do it. Do you have any advice for someone in that position? Yeah. Um, I, I really too persistence and tenacity. I mean, mm. you, you, you've, you've, you've got, you've, you, you, if you're going to do this business in real estate, you, you need to, I, I call it almost like there was a movie Pearl Harbor um, ben Affleck, I think was in that. Mm -hmm. and I was, they were, they were the story of Pearl Harbor, but 
you know, think of it as taking off on an aircraft carrier, right? And you, yeah. you, you know, it's a very short window. Give yourself, you know, if you're doing this, if you're fairly new, it's like be on an aircraft carrier because, and you, you, you got, you know, it's 90 days to make this thing real, right? You got to get in front of sellers. You got to make offers. You got to get the first deal. Don't waste your time. I've seen so many people that are like thinking that they need more coaching and more mentoring. You don't You actually need sellers you need to be on the phone. Yeah. Um, you know, education without implementation is extremely expensive entertainment. Yeah. A friend of mine told me that. So yeah. Yeah. you got to You got to implement. Uh, the other thing with mindset is, um, coach, coach Willie will say this. Um, and that, that is, you know, he, he uses it, he calls it the, the big hack. Mm -hmm. And I've, we've, in fact, I've sent this out to everybody in our group, in the REI Vault group, but it's basically the secret to success. And uh, there was an interview that was done and they took three guys. It was around dating. Uh -huh. and, they, <clears throat> and so they took, a, they, took, they took a guy, they took three, three, three people and they basically wanted to see who could date more women. So, you know, it's a little bit sexist or what have you, but it, it really gives a good point. And the first guy, they basically... You know, they taught him all the secrets of what to say and how to say it. They made him perfect, right? Uh -huh. They took another, they took somebody else and they bought him a car, made him look really good. Yeah. And then they took the third person and they said, we're not going to train you anything. We're going to, we're going to just for, have you do more, more attempts. Mm -hmm. and it was the one that did the mo the more attempts. Yeah. The more, the more offers, right? So yeah. this business is get out there and do it. Yeah. Got to get up to bat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pers persistence and tenacity. I don't know if that, if that's if that helps. Yeah. No, that's very helpful. That's great. And, and how about the, what, what's the one thing you're most passionate about? I, now I, I can definitely see that and, and hear the passion in what you're doing in your business. And that's, it's, uh, that too is contagious, but what, what would you say is your, your big, biggest passion in life right now? You know, I'm an abundance mentality versus scarcity mentality person. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, everybody in the REI Vault group, we have found that that's a very common element is mm -hmm. that we're passionate about, you know, giving to others mm -hmm. and, um, and delivering back. So I, you know, everybody that knows me, I get really excited about, you know, doing stuff that works and has an impact uh, to other people. I, lo I love the REI Vault group because I'm seeing what it's been able to do for our members. Um, Nice. You know, there's a lot of properties out there. A lot of the deals that, you know, that are being bought are inherited properties that are run down that need a lot of work. And a lot of these sellers have no place to go. So yeah. it's, 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 and people are, you know, we're rebuilding America. Mm -hmm. um, I'm passionate about, um, I'm passionate about building things that get massive amounts of leverage and economies of scale. Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, in, in our business, you know, I've got a, a team of 40 people and, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm passionate about making it frictionless. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just, it works. You know, we got clarity of where we're heading, et yeah. cetera. It's not, makes, we're not makes, running, not running yeah. a fire drill. I don't, yeah. you know, I have no fire drills yeah. in, our, in our business. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. Well, personal, this... personal note, a lot of vacation time. I'm a, I'm an avid fly fisherman. Mm -hmm. I took two weeks in, uh, this year and went to Montana fly fishing. I just got back. And so from a passion perspective, that's what I do. Nice. nice. <laughs> Nice. That sounds like fun. Excellent. Well, uh, this has been a real pleasure, Gary. Um, uh, uh, any listeners out there, if, uh, if you have any comments, any thoughts, any, anything you'd like to share about this podcast or about any other podcast, or if you have ideas of things that would be helpful to you that we have where we have guests on our show, um, be sure to let us know what it is that, that would help you get to that next level? What could we bring to you that would help, help you get to that next level? And um, certainly what you've brought, uh, brought today, Gary, is, uh, is, is going to be very helpful. I mean, the, the couple of things that you're willing to uh, just give away are going to be really powerful to, to a lot of people, I'm sure. And so really want to thank you for that. And thank you for, for taking the time for this interview. It's a, it's, it's been a real pleasure. And I, Look forward to uh, more more episodes with you. Uh, uh, definitely. Awesome, Tom. It was a pleasure. All right. So, well, thank thanks, you. everybody. And yep. uh, and I look forward if there's some people that are REI Vault members in the future. We really look forward. I look forward to getting to know you as well. So. 
great. All right. Well, thank you, Gary. See ya.